everyone, it's Bebop Theo7 here and welcome back to Nietzsche and the Zodiac Tribes. I am here with the Rabbit Tribe today and I just really quickly want to say, ah! 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 I can't believe myself! Do you guys realize how freaking ridiculous I am? Do you realize that she probably could have had a baby because, I mean, I didn't even, I completely, I didn't, I mean, I, ah! Ah! Okay, for some reason, for some odd reason, I remembered some weird glitch or like update thing where we couldn't set down nest on trunks and I don't know why I thought this or why I remembered this. Maybe it happened in a previous tribe or like in some recent generations among the zodiacs. But for some reason, maybe it even happened in the Wolfpack challenge, but for some reason, I thought that in the new updates, we couldn't set down nests on tree trunks. And it turns out, you guys, I was wrong. And you want to know how sucky that is? That is extremely sucky, because guess what? Cuckoo and Poison Baby. Baby? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I guess so, because I'm sorry, baby, I'm so sorry. <sighs> They probably could have had ba- they could have had a baby! Poisonberry's legacy could have continued, but now, now she's stuck, and she doesn't get to have children because I was so just- ah, stupid? Ah, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Poisonberry. Gosh, and your beautiful blue eyes are gonna be so missed. That makes me really sad, but you guys, it could have been worse. I mean, at the very least, she does get to enjoy the pleasure of being the first Nietzscheling, I think in any of our games so far, to have actually called a Nietzscheling up while sitting on the trunk. None of the Nietzschelings have, who have like been sitting on trunks their entire lives, calling forth for the mate of their life, for the love of their life, have actually succeeded in bringing in any rabbits for us to invite into our tribe. Or just anybody into our tribe. So there's that. At least we were kind of lucky um, in that area. I mean, I. Oh, I'm so sorry, Poisonberry. <sighs> but oh well. I can't really change anything. Although I do really like this kind of like little legacy thing that this might set up for her. And I thought it would be very interesting if perhaps in the future, like future generations of rabbits, if they have really good singing voices, because you guys know that they like to sing songs to each other to try and, you know, woo the, their loves and, you know, win them over, win themselves a mate, that perhaps if a Nietzscheling has a particularly good singing voice, a particularly tempting and beautiful enchanting singing voice, that they might be considered to have been given the gift of song by Poisonberry, because her her voice was so beautiful as to drag a mer Nietzscheling from the sea to join their tribe. So I think that's a very cool idea. And Trinket actually had a pretty good idea um, that perhaps, I mean, she created Cuckoo from the sea foam, so maybe she has magical powers like that too. Whether it was to be her mate or to be just some sort of companion, um, like son, mate, uh, friend, whatever it was, perhaps she did create him out of the sea foam and if I remember right I think that makes me think of like um, Greek gods like I I think it was Aphrodite who was birthed from sea foam so that's a pretty interesting idea maybe like Poisonberry sort of sort of did that you know that's kind of interesting maybe Cuckoo's like our <laughs> Aphrodite hopefully I'm not wrong there I need to brush up on the mythology it was always fun reading those books I've got a couple that I need to read all over again but uh, okay so now we got that dramaticness out of the way. I'm sorry, you guys. I know you probably would have loved to see Poison Mary's baby, but unfortunately, I was a complete and total ding dong. So I, I messed it up. I remember feeling so dramatic, like, no, we gotta get her baby, and then it could have been done so easily. It could have been done so easily. And I think sometimes that stuff like that just happens because you get yourself so worked up, and you know you have to do it a certain way, and you don't even think. I mean. <sighs> I just was afraid of risking the baby, I guess, because I didn't want to have her breed and then not be able to set down the nest, but I think we would have been able to have a baby, so I'm sorry, you guys. Now that we've done that catch-up, there is a little bit more that I want to talk about, and I feel like there might be a bit of drama today, you guys, because, you see, Jaqua is still a little bit bitter about the fact that he was not chosen to be the leader. Now... I mean, 
his family had the first twins in the entire tribe. The first twins! We also brought the nimble fingers! And he just doesn't understand why he was not given the, like, the respect and the title of leader when obviously he was chosen by the goddess Cleopatra to lead this tribe for something great and amazing. But Fexanara was the previous tribe leader and she left, she left it in her mate's hand. She left it in Shrino's hand. So we're going to have to see how things go. And Shrino still has a while to live, so Jaco can't really wait him out. Who knows? I think, though, that this might cause a bit of drama because you guys know that our rabbits are a little... They're a little more, let's see, shy, suspicious, untrusting. And we suddenly have a new member in our midst that was accepted, like, in a... I don't know, a burst of goodwill, I guess? Just sudden startled, like, oh, hi, hello. And I, I don't know how they all will react to that, and I feel like Jocko might have something to say about it. But let's go ahead, let's pass the turn. We actually have a mama who's, oh. Oh, that's so sad. I think we named, what did we name this whale? I think we named it George. If I remember right, we named the whale George. George just called out in mourning for Poison Berry. I wonder if they sang together while she was on the on the ports over here. If they sang together. Oh, guys, I'm so sad. I really liked Poison Berry, but I really like the idea of her being this like this sort of half goddess or whatever. Um, just this entity, a beautiful song. That seems like a good fit for her. But now that that's done, now that that whole craziness is done, Raspberry is trying to register what happened, and she's mourning a good friend, a uh, poor little Nietzscheling who's sick from birth, and her daughter, I think this is her daughter, yeah, her daughter Goldfish is just staring at this newcomer like, um, hello, and oh, I just want to point out, I accidentally said he was, um, albino last time, he's, he's got melanism, guys, complete opposite of albino. So, um, just thought I'd point that out there. I, I put like a little texty thing up so that you guys could know that I messed up and that I recognized it, but I'll put it out here too because I, I, know, I know he's not albino, I just said the wrong thing. But, um, so she's just kind of looking at him like, uh, who is this guy? Who's this weirdo? And Cuckoo is utterly befuddled and I think extremely confused because he came forth, he was brought to life by a beautiful voice and and now it's gone. What's happening? Where is he? Why is he? Just why? So hopefully uh, Goldfish, who maybe her name has something to do with um, why, like maybe it has something to do with the waters, with mermaid rabbits, and perhaps she'll be able to help guide our poor friend Cuckoo around. Um, it looks like they could breed though, so perhaps if she gets older, we'll see. Um, she does have some- did I already put normal eyes in your genetics? I did, okay. So first things first, I think we're gonna try to get a little bit normal. So I'm gonna go ahead and sit Raspberry up here, and she's gonna get us some bunny meat. Her daughter is going to try and show Cuckoo around, I think. She's gonna be very cautious about it and show him what not to eat, because Cuckoo has no idea what's going on. He has no idea what he's supposed to do, he doesn't know what these plants are, he doesn't know what this place is, and he just feels very befuddled and a, a very, what he does feel is a very stark, like, longing, stark, is that the right word? <laughs> Stern, heavy, this, uh, evident, I don't know, um, big, I'll just use big, we'll use big, big longing for the beautiful voice that brought him into being. And I think having this little niche thing around to show him the, the ways of life around here certainly makes him feel better. And right now she's showing him about these poisonous berries and maybe talking a little bit about the nicheling that had sung him into being and talking about why she was named Poisonberry because her eyes were as blue as the beautiful leaves of the Poisonberry bushes. Not like the actual berries are good or anything, but you know, the leaves are pretty, so yeah. But uh, in that whole confusion, Pepperoot has, um, she's ready to have a baby. <laughs> I think she's gonna come back by, um, 
by Stickweed, and their little their little feud has kind of settled down a bit. Although I do think he's gonna come over and try to whack it again, just to show off. And she's kind of. I think she might actually go back and try to challenge him again too, but now it's more playful instead of um, like, I'm better than you. It's like, oh yeah, you think I can't do that? Well, I am going to beat you. How about that? I'm going to beat you at it. And then you have to um, get me all the berries, like all the berries that you can for like a week or something. You know, you're, you're in charge of all that. Meanwhile, Chakwa is making his way over to Shrino because he has been hearing about this commotion and he's got some words. <sighs> And now that we're done there, let's actually focus on the twins for a second because you guys are the most important thing for us right now. And the reason is, we are trying to get the purse now. We're only a couple licks away, which means we'll be able to start bringing in some nichelings that will help us heal other nichelings. Because if we had had the purse now, there's a good chance Poisonberry would have lived longer and I would have realized my mistake. And even with that mistake, I would have been able to let her have a baby. So we want to go ahead and try our best with that. So I'm going to actually, um, you know, I probably should have Casova on this side, but I'm going to let him collect first and we're going to lick the scent off him and have her collect and then he can lick the scent off her. So there we go. And I think we might have unlocked the purse now. <gasps> yes. And you know what, you guys, what if Casova was the one who had it in, what if these twins? have the person out in their genetics so that it's kind of their line that brings in the healers. We have the collectors, the collecting healers, oh that'd be so awesome. Okay, I really like that idea, but let's go ahead and focus on some of our other nichelings. I think right now Saranai is trying to chase after her good friend Goldfish to figure out what's going on and Dre is attempting to keep her um, nearby because she's being a bit reckless. And he, he can't really leave his daughter Enyo, which is such an adorable name, by the way. Because um, she's, you know, she's a baby. You can't leave the baby. But Saranai is um, a little impatient, so I think she's going to jump down by goldfish and gather up the grass and kind of ask, like, what's going on? What's, who is that? Who's this? Why is he here? Aren't we best friends? Um, you know what? She might get jealous. That'd be kind of funny. That'd be kind of funny. Are you jealous, Saranai? Are you jealous of Cuckoo? <gasps> should I give him a new name or should we keep his name the way it is? Because that's how um, Poisonberry imagined him. What do you think? If you guys think we should change his name, let me know. If not, and you like the idea of keeping him the way that Poisonberry created him, then um, well, we'll keep him that way. And oh gosh, I really like that storyline. It's just such an interesting aspect. But we are going to go ahead and let's focus on these guys over here since we are getting a little bit low on food again. Sort of. We're not overly low on food, but we're low enough. And I think we're going to actually send uh, Micah over here. Or Mika. Maybe I'll just say Mika. Mika looks like it's the best thing for me to really call her. It's the easiest thing to say. It makes more sense with um, how her name is spelled too. But, alright, so Shrino is doing his best to collect up food for our tribe. Meanwhile, Pistachio, hearing the commotion, wants to call a mate of her own. Ah! Uh, I accidentally passed the turn! I was gonna have her call! I was gonna have her sing to the ocean! Ah! Uh, uh, I hate when that happens! Guys, okay, so I pause. I paused the video so I could sneeze, right? Because it's a little weird to hear a big ha ha choo in the middle of the video. And then... While I did, like, my finger just hit the space bar and passed the turn. And, um, unfortunately, I mean, the little squeak I did after was kind of funny. So it's kind of sad that you guys didn't get to hear that one. But I just went, ah! I, I, there you go. There, there. I guess you did get to hear it. Okay. Oh, whoa! <laughs> He's got pink straight. <laughs> I'm sorry. That hit me off guard. <laughs> Look at his hair. What's with your hair? I I don't know how to okay, you know those like fancy Valentine chocolates and there's always that like um there's always the dark chocolate one with the fluffy pink raspberry filling. That's what that reminds me of, and it's hilarious. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's give you a new name. Tanunu's funny. That's a funny name. I'm sorry. 
Oh, the first name I saw was Tishan, so not too far off. <laughs> Look at his hair! <laughs> I don't know why it's making me laugh so much, but it just looks so ridiculous. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, Tishan. What what do you have, man? What do you got? What's your gen what's your what are your genetics? All right, so he's got big ear recessive. He's got ram horns, perfect eyesight, perfect blood clotting, perfect fertility. He's got swimming tail. He's got normal body, two normal runner legs, and normal hind legs. And he's got the spit now, uh, derp snout. I'm sorry, the derp snout. I'm still used to calling it the spit snout. And he's got stripes and brown eyes, which are really cute. <laughs> Uh, his hair. Uh, I just, you guys had a very cute, cute baby. <laughs> okay, so now that that's done, I'm actually going to go ahead and try to call forth another mate. Come on. Come on. Nothing. Are you kidding me? Did we at least unlock, how close are we to the peacock tail? Come on. Yo, yo, how close are we, eh? Okay, so we need to do it a lot more. <laughs> We're nowhere near close. Come on, Pistachio, you can do this. I think she's gonna try to find another tree trunk soon. This one's not working for her. You know what, I wonder if maybe a legend on this island is that if you sit on the tree trunk that Poisonberry called Cuckoo from, you will find your true love, or at least know who your true love is. Ah, that's such an interesting idea, oh my goodness. Ha! I'm excited. I'm so excited about this, but okay. Okay. <laughs> His hair. Um, we're gonna- we're not gonna collect. We're gonna try and destroy this berry bush. Ooh, stickweed, why? Come on. Come on, man. You got this. You can do this. Oh, and we're gonna have the confront- com com confrontation? There we go. I always say confrontation. It's confrontation. I know that. Or is it? Ah! <sighs> I hate when you say a word like three to four times and suddenly it doesn't feel like a word anymore and then you just keep saying it worse and worse. But we're gonna go ahead and change Mika's, um, Mika, Mika? Mika's, yeah, Mika's, okay. I don't, I, I have so much trouble pronouncing your name, sweetheart, I really do. But, um, we're gonna go ahead and swipe up this bunny meat. We're gonna let Dre grab this bunny because he really likes hunting. He's gonna grab the berries. He's actually like one of our big food suppliers and I find that hilarious. But his daughter, now being a little bit older, is going to sit herself on the nest and try to help the tribe by collecting up acorns at Shrino's request. And now that that's done, Jacqua is heading over to have a word with his brother about this supposed newcomer and the very strange story that he just was allowed to waltz in. Waltz in on this tribe that's already got quite a few nichelings that has to take care of, quite a few families that they have to worry about, and so he's causing some issues. Like, why would you just let this nicheling in here? Aren't you going to do anything about it? What if it goes after our children? What if it, and it's like, he's being very rude, really. Um, maybe the fear and the frustration, I think the frustration with feeling like he's been overlooked despite the supposed blessing that Cleopatra gave his family and the feeling of like there's these random, there's, there's too much, too much at once. And now that we're done discussing that, I think we're going to go ahead, swipe this up and I'm going to let Raspberry call just once and she got us a bunny so you know what? I wonder if Sara and I would like to try and get this bunny. I know that's silly, but I think she's she's our more feisty um, of the two royal daughters. I think there's only two. And um, there might be three? No, there's only two. And she and Goldfish are going to collect it, and I think that Cuckoo is going to try to destroy this berry bush, and then he's sticking close to Goldfish because he doesn't know anything in this area. What is he supposed to do? And Raspberry is keeping a close eye on them, but she's trying not to get too close and to put too much pressure, but she's very fidgety and very eager to get back to her mate. And unfortunately, she's going to pass away. Oh no! Oh, Raspberry. But I think she's in a good position, though, because she can see Dre, and Dre can probably hear her. Yeah, he could hear her pretty well from here. So they're talking together, and they're... 
they're spending their last moments together and these three are kind of off on their adventure and I think that Sara and I um, wants to keep exploring but Goldfish might start bringing Cuckoo up this way to meet her father and to meet her friend's father and Jaqua is still arguing fervently that the newcomer should be investigated that we shouldn't just allow this random stranger into our tribe and now that that's happening let's see I'm gonna go ahead and allow Yucca to collect up as many of these fruits as she can and we're actually gonna start sending the twins inward because I would very much like for them to find themselves a family a mate and here's what we're going to do you guys we are going to go ahead and put the purse now and I know he already has the nimble fingers so it's probably not gonna be the most effective if I do it this way you know what? actually let's look at his other uh, genetics and we're gonna try and see if there's anything we want to prevent really I don't see anything he's got pretty much perfect health and even if he got lean body that's not too big of a deal right now so I think I'm gonna go back and I think I will try to encourage nimble fingers because if we could get a double nimble fingered Nietzscheling that would be awesome but at the same time should I really I don't know well maybe you guys can help me out with that why don't you pick another trait for me to put into their genetics for her she's gonna have the purse now and she's gonna have normal eyesight I normally would try to encourage um, I, w I was gonna try to encourage nimble fingers with her but I'll, I'll put that on her mate Instead, I really want to get some purse now Nietzschelings in here so that in the future we can heal um, Nietzschelings who are hurt because that's a really useful trait, okay? Ugh, it's a really useful trait. <laughs> but okay, we have a couple more Nietzschelings that we gotta move around. Like right now we have Mika and Mika needs to go ahead and gather up some berries. She only had a few to gather up apparently. Um, maybe she could go around here and try to dig. Right now, Pepperroot though, she does not want to leave her baby. She's very nervous about leaving her kid. So she's gonna go ahead, clear away this grass, try to dig in the um, in the roots for some roots. And she's gonna keep an eye on Tishan. <sighs> oh, you're, I really like him. <laughs> oh, he, he gave me quite a laugh earlier. I really, I still don't quite understand why, but that made me really happy. But okay, you guys, a lot of stuff happened in this episode that I'm really happy about. I love how Poisonberry's like legacy seems to have developed and I'm excited to see where her influence on this tribe will go and I'm excited to see how Cuckoo will learn and grow as a Nietzscheling and if perhaps there is a possibility since Goldfish is about to grow up that he might fall for her. Although I do think that the longing for Poisonberry's song is deeply woven within him and perhaps that could be the cause of some interesting little like subsections of the rabbit tribe like we've got our healers and collectors that we're working on we've got our more feisty rabbits who are still cautious much more cautious than any of our other hunters but they they go out of their way a little bit more to they go on adventures a little bit more so it's interesting to see like what little section could develop from these guys from cuckoo in his line but all right, you guys, I think that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and I want to thank you all for watching, but I got to be popping on out of here, and I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.